listening to In the Books, a podcast where we discuss on-screen adaptations of our favorite books. I'm Michelle, and you can find me at Musings on the various socials out there. I'm Rita. I'm at Annoying Rita. Basically just Instagram. I've actually, I can't log back into my Twitter account. I tried and... Oh, <laughs> well, there <laughs> it's we gone go. forever. Welcome to the fourth episode in our ongoing series of podcasts on the show Normal People. This week we're discussing episode four of the show and the corresponding chapter, singular, in the novel. <laughs> but strap yourselves in for the recap. Okay. Well, it is now autumn of 2011. Uh, Connell is in Dublin. He goes to view a room and meets future roommate and all-around nice fellow... Fella. Niall. You've got to do it fella. in like a slightly Irish accent. <laughs> a nice fella, Niall. Uh, he tells Niall he is starting at Trinity on Monday. He got in! Huzzah! Cue the inspirational music as he walks onto campus and takes his first class. He walks to the library where he begins to stress read and then goes back home to make beans on toast and study. Oh boy, hitting all of the markers for uh, first day in college. Cliches uh, everywhere. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, we then cut to one of his classes. He watches on silently as the posh kids around him explain their surface level analysis of Maul Flanders. When called on for his own opinion, Connell struggles to say much of anything. That weekend, Connell drives all the way home to see his mum and finds she's not in when he arrives. He goes to his room to read and eventually his very glamorous looking mother saunters back home. She has been out with a friend. Ooh. Well, good for her. The next morning, Connell works a shift at the petrol station. He then meets Rob at the pub, who is desperate for gossip and exciting Dublin stories. When Connell is less enthusiastic about his college experience, Rob reminds him that it's better than Sligo and that he wishes he had he had uh, Connell's brains and tells him not to waste it. He needs to enjoy himself. Excellent advice, Rob. Mm -hmm. Connell heads back to Dublin. Uh, and his roommate invite him to sit and have a drink with his friends. Eventually, Connell eases up and joins them. Mm. There we go. First step. Yeah. He begins to start enjoying the books he is assigned and is able to participate in discussions about Emma. This is yes. where I fully fell in love with him. <laughs> Connell's a J night, guys. We love him. Yay! One of us. One of us. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the room is impressed with his thoughts. He's pretty much the only one who's actually read the book. As a result, <laughs> he is introduced to Gareth. He goes for a coffee with Gareth and has to endure Gareth's right-wing ideas about quote-unquote protecting free speech. And when Connell gives him some good-natured pushback, Gareth is impressed and invites him to join the debate society. Not going to happen. And to a house party he's throwing tomorrow night. Connell's on the phone with his mum, who is begging him to just go to the bloody house party. <laughs> Connell is weary of spending time around, quote-unquote, Trinity students, you know, rich entitled snobs. Picture one of them, so, anyway. His mother is like, please, just leave the house for once, you loser. <laughs> so he does. He goes to the party and immediately turns around to leave once he's inside. <laughs> <laughs> Love that for him. Gareth yes. catches him and forces him to make very awkward small talk with a girl with pink hair who looks like she absolutely hates him. They have nothing in yeah. common. Mm -mm. Gareth then tells him there's someone he wants him to meet and then drags him outside to where his girlfriend is smoking, surrounded by friends. Gareth calls out her name, but you already know who it is. He said she was from Sligo. It has to be. Da -da -da. Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> Marianne is now extremely cool and dresses like an extra in Almost Famous. That's a very dated reference, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a great movie. It really is. Um, they head to the kitchen. Marianne offers Connell a superior beer from what he had been given earlier, and they immediately fall back into their usual banter. They joke about Marianne's lame boyfriend, and Marianne tells him she missed Connell. Things take an immediate turn for the strained when they discuss Marianne leaving school and Connell's short-lived relationship with Rachel. 
Connell admits to feeling abandoned when she stopped talking to him. She remarks that she feels similarly. There is a moment of brief, heart-shattering connection before they begin bantering again. She calls her boyfriend a holocaust, de- he or calls he her calls boyfriend. her boyfriend a holocaust denier, and she cringes. She asks if he is dating anyone problematic at the moment, and he admits he is finding it hard to meet people. It's a bit different from home. Marianne says that's probably why she is so good at it. She offers to set him up with a friend, but he looks kind of sad as he tells her he is probably not their type. Marianne looks upset and asks what is wrong with him. Connell's thin veneer of self-loathing slips as he tells her he doesn't know. Oh, Connell, you love Jane Austen. You're the you're the dream man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Marianne wakes up the next morning besides Gareth. She tidies up the mess from the party and then checks her phone for a message. <laughs> she looks sort of wistful as she drinks her coffee. She then walks home along the canal her mother was previously talking about in episode two and slips into her fucking massive flat. Oh my god. Aggressive. <laughs> I felt poor. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Later, her friends Peggy and Joanna are around for a glass of wine and a moan about their respective mothers. Well, everyone apart from Joanna, who has a great relationship with hers, and she will remain probably the most well-adjusted person on the show because of it. Someone <laughs> asks where Gareth is, and of course, he's at some society thing. <laughs> Gareth. <laughs> that man is quite the joiner. Mm-hmm. Peggy clearly hates Gareth and insists that he's not good enough for Marianne. But who is? God, oh. mm-hmm. <laughs> we get a montage of Marianne's uni life, which seems to involve having multiple men fawn over her as she strides across campus dressed like she fronts a Fleetwood Mac tribute act. <laughs> Just <laughs> living the dream. Yes. One of her friends asks her about Connell and she is pressured into giving her his number. Like, she looks so uncomfy. Mm -hmm. She does valiantly attempt to act like the idea isn't terrifying. But, you know, we know better. Back at her impossibly gorgeous flat, Marianne sits with Joanne drinking tea and they discuss how Joanne has her entire life mapped out and how unnormal that is. Joanne suggests that all her school friends probably have no idea what they want to do. Marianne admits that she d- didn't really have any friends. Joanne asks about Connell, and Marianne is like, well, he wasn't really a friend, in the kind of tone that every girl understands. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Cut to Marianne in her class. Unlike Connell, she is not afraid to engage in heated debate. Unlike Connell, because she is a woman, she is spoken over, and her tutor has to intervene and make sure she can finish making her point. Because, facts. <laughs> Depressing. Uh-huh. Uh, cut to Marianne's flat that night. Her friends are all basking in her success and regaling her boyfriends with Intentional tales plural. Of, <laughs> yes. <laughs> with tales of her brilliance in debate. One of her friends, slimy-ass Jamie, interrupts her boyfriend from pouring Marianne a drink and tells him... She will be drinking the white. Apparently, they are playing a game where Jamie makes all her decisions for her. It's creepy. Jamie then calls everyone at uni stupid. And when Gareth pushes back and says the people on his course are all smart, Jamie then attacks the subject and becomes super confrontational. I felt so offended, by the way. (laughs) So sick of people saying that about English. Fuck you, Jamie. (laughs) <laughs> oh. Marianne, no doubt getting flashbacks to her childhood, leaves the room and goes to check on the rice and do some deep <laughs> breathing exercises. <laughs> Cut to her watching Peggy snort cocaine. <laughs> she offers Marianne right. some, but Marianne refuses. Peggy is seeing Christian, who has a girlfriend, and Marianne clearly disapproves and asks what Peggy is going to do when she's the sensible girlfriend and her boyfriends are fucking and taking drugs with students. Peggy is never going to be anyone's sensible girlfriend. (laughs) 
Good for her, honestly. Uh, cut to Marianne, <laughs> who's scraping spaghetti off plates following dinner. Notice that th- yeah. the rice has turned into spaghetti? What the fuck? Maybe yeah. she burnt the rice. I, 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 yeah. I want a whole hmm. rice backstory. What happened to the rice? <laughs> <laughs> All her friends are off down the pub, but Marianne decides to stay home instead. Despite claiming to be exhausted, she lies awake at night thinking about connell she sends a text and we cut to connell who's at home reading the adventures of tom sawyer in his bed which is adorable (laughs) (laughs) his phone buzzes and he reads a text and we cut to black yeah that was a much nicer ending than the previous episode oh thank god yes yeah in general what did you Mm -hmm. think of it um i thought it was uh great to see how they, you know, we are now away from Sligo, um, away from um, all of the influences that, you know, had Connell frozen, basically, with this um, friend group and, and all of that. And, you know, plunks him into um, an environment where, you know, he's not Mr. Cool. He's not you know, the, the top of the class dude. And, you know, he's, he's got to, he's got to start establishing who he is, um, fresh. And, uh, I really liked the way that, you know, uh, that he is reintroduced to Marianne. We see this, this very subtle little dance that starts with the two of them at that very first party um uh, i i really enjoyed it and i love the way that they cut to black after the text uh after the text i thought that was just like perfect yes just perfect i feel like the way Mm -hmm. they have managed to parcel out the novel is amazing like they've found Mm -hmm. you know when you get a novel is there's not always like an easy point to cut off for every mm-hmm. uh, chapter but they've managed to yeah. build little cliffhangers <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. text message but somehow it's like ooh, ooh, what what did, what did she say <gasps> what 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 is he gonna say yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's gonna happen yeah i love this uh, episode and i think mm-hmm. um when you think it's only half an hour i think it does a really great job of um, establishing like the world of Trinity mm-hmm. and the experience and the way that these two people have completely different lives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they only yeah. like intersect for one scene. I find it kind of fascinating just how different their lives are. I think it's ripe mm-hmm. for class analysis, and I'm sure we'll get into that later. But mm-hmm. when you think like you only really spend a f- couple minutes each of them i mean worlds apart <laughs> parallel um speaking of the text why do you think she did text him probably because she has not been able to get him out of her head since seeing him you know i mean you would think given the fact that she's the one that suggested that he go to trinity um you know and all of that that she would have at least wondered about whether or not he was there. Um, And who knows, maybe she did, and we don't know that. I mean, she's apparently been keeping up on who he's dating on Facebook, so she definitely knows (laughs) he's going to college. (laughs) (sighs) So... Um, you know, I, I just think that she has not been able to get him out of her head. And so, you know, she winds up um, finally going, OK, fuck it. I'm going to send him a text and see what happens. Um, yeah, how about you? She, she thinks she's in a place of relative power over him now. Like, mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. words of Michael Spot, oh, how the turntables. <laughs> yes. And. It would be so easy for her to just cling on to that power and maybe be a little bit cold towards him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's not like he did. Uh, you know, their their breakup was anything to to have warm feelings about. It was messy. Uh, 
Yes, it was. I yeah, but I think they do a really good job of establishing in those few minutes we have with her why she would want to text him, and I think I get a real mm-hmm. sense of how lonely she is. I mm-hmm. know she's surrounded mm-hmm. by friends yes. and all these men fawning over. <laughs> Yeah, but it's she has not a whole like ass they boyfriend, have... but I don't think she seems <laughs> particularly happy. Yeah, which is yeah. not something that I would have like if I was eighteen and I saw Marianne striding across campus, I would be like, "Oh my god, she's living the dream!" <laughs> exactly, you know, with her giant flat and all of her wildly fashionable clothes and uh, doing all, a full yeah. face of makeup to go to her lectures. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you think, oh, she's got it together, and it's like, and it's, I don't know about that. I don't know. And like, it's funny when this time watching that scene of her in her um, lesson where she's, you know, arguing with that misogynistic little twit. Um, mm-hmm. She seemed almost bored, and I was thinking, like, in comparison to say Connell, I think she's much more used to the kind of combative debate style yeah. oh yeah and i yeah. feel like she she can maintain her composure because of her very fucked up childhood and mm-hmm. that really impresses her friends but i think mm-hmm. she finds it all quite triggering like whenever her mm-hmm. friends start fighting she has to walk out of the room and like mm-hmm. she is more drawn to someone more calm like connell <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. that's where she feels more safe. And that makes a lot of sense. Oh, absolutely. Um, I have uh, the same kind of thing when uh, people are in um, a fight or an argument and voices are raised. Um, I go into, you know, serious fight or flight and uh, will need to walk away from the situation. It's just because of you know, you know, um, his, because of life and, you know, past history and that kind of thing. And so, yeah, I totally got that. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's something that her, her friends are glamorizing almost like, oh, Mm -hmm. she's able to fight people (laughs) just very calmly. And Mm -hmm. it's like something that I think she feels very uncomfortable with. Like, obviously when they were praising her for it, she was like, oh, this isn't because of a good thing, you know? Um, (laughs) Yeah. And it, and I think, um, by contrast, Connell being like pushed into a situation where he is like forced to speak. So good for Mm -hmm. him. (laughs) I'm like, yes. Oh yeah. Please Connell, just fucking say something. You're the only one that's read the book. Um, (laughs) yeah. And I, I mean, I loved, I loved what he, what he said. So, I mean, Bravo screen, you know, the script writers and, um, you know, Rooney for, um, you know, putting something like that together. It, it was great. And it was great to see how impressed uh, his teacher was. It was almost like she was saying, OK, about time. I knew you had it <laughs> in you, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, this was a great episode. Book versus the episode. This was only one chapter of the book. Yeah. Um, but I can I can happily tell you I have finished the book. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I finished it. Yes. Did you cry at the end? I always cry at the end. Anyway. Uh yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Stop hysterical. Uh huh. But no spoilers. Yeah. Um. No. What I liked about this particular episode was that they've managed to really flesh out with what is actually quite a short chapter of the book. They've managed mm-hmm. to make like maybe one sentence of the novel, and like it's a whole scene. You know, in the novel, there's just like, yeah, I have moved into Trinity and I have a roommate and his name's Neil and he's from mm-hmm. Northern Ireland. And then in the show, you get like a full scene of him meeting him and seeing yeah. the room and looking around and being like, oh shit, there's laundry everywhere. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it was like, okay, here's the room and the room is a shambles. Oh my God. <laughs> he's like, I've never seen like, so much laundry. <laughs> Yeah, Niall's like, I, I should better, I, I better move my clothes off the bed. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I totally do that. Like, you know, when you're staying in a hotel and you've only got a single, so you like mm-hmm. stick all your shit on the other bed. Totally understand. Yeah, absolutely. That is what the other bed is for. 
Niall, you humble <laughs> king. Um, yeah, I just like the way that we got to spend time like doing everyday mundane things with Connell, like watching mm-hmm. him make beans, and then you got a contrast with Marianne's day, um, and she's mm-hmm. making this like elaborate dinner party thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> She's making him beans yeah. and toast and she is like either making rice and pasta or she's like got courses. I don't know. It's like <laughs> it's so reflective of absolutely everything about their personality, their class mm-hmm. and just yes. their social lives at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um yeah, I thought that they did a, a fantastic job with you know, taking this single chapter and, you know, and even though we only have 30 minutes, um, taking this single chapter and breathing um, uh, color and context and and um, stuff that we can enjoy visually um, and take with us as we move into the how this thing between Marianne and Connell uh will proceed from here and part of the genius of that i thought was the struct the way they structured the episode because it Mm -hmm. it started off completely from connell's point of view and then we got that very long marianne and connell scene in the kitchen then it sort Mm -hmm. of switches just all marianne's point of view yeah um and that's the first time they've done anything like that they we've never had Mm -hmm. like a set perspective Mm-hmm. Like the way you you do in the novel, like it switches from mm-hmm. Marianne to Connell to Marianne to Connell. We started off with maybe like potentially the more universal universal experience of university, and then you get Marianne's very specific. Um, <laughs> it's very hard to describe what is what that lifestyle is. Privileged, very weirdly like aesthetic. <laughs> Um, yeah, idealized version of what mm-hmm. everybody hopes to have. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, who wouldn't want to have you know a beautiful, shabby chic flat, um, you know, along the canal and rent free, <laughs> so you know don't have to worry about anything along those lines. Um, and you know you're able to you know dress fashionably and um host have parties. Ha- have host parties and drink lovely wine and you know all that kind of stuff you know and me you know meanwhile beats on toast <laughs> over on the yeah, over on the other side of campus um we see you know connell uh basically having a a rumpled up bed um and pillow um cooking beans on toast and you know reading his books by a tiny little light uh in his bed i mean it's, it's it doesn't get much more stark than that <laughs> and i think that's why they structured the episode that way to really highlight mm-hmm. the difference i think if we had just mm-hmm. cut from scene to scene it would have been like less of a contrast. They, I think they've structured it very beautifully. And there is like a sliding doors element to the episode because it's like, what if he hadn't gone to the party and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Who knows what would have happened. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that the way they've structured it really heightens that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We're speaking about Connell. And his beans on toast. The scene where he he has to leave the library but can't stop reading long enough to pack his bag and then he almost forgets his jacket and then he turns around and is like, oh, shit, shit. <laughs> but he's still reading his book. <laughs> so sweet. And I really relate. I think, like, the whole episode, um, I was fully in my, oh, my God, I see so much of myself in Connell. A lot of my experience <laughs> at uni um, mirror oh. his and I realised... Everyone was speaking in very abstract terms because they hadn't read the book. <laughs> that same way where I was like, how many of you actually fucking read this? Um, am I the only one? I think um, it might be the most honest and realistic depiction of uni I've seen, I guess, because, you know, a lot of the shows I have seen this experience in is like American and it's kind of glossy and glamorous and nobody's ever studying <laughs> 
ever. Um, <laughs> and it gets presented in this kind of fantasy way. And it's great to see the ways in which this experience can be kind of tough and isolating, but also like a really good it's just breaking you out of your shell. I think like the growth mm-hmm. that Connell is having is just something everyone really experiences when they're in a new environment, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I was just <sighs> it brought back so many memories um of what it was like to be in college. Right. Um yeah, also just that like I the was... aesthetic things of like the vast expanse of mm-hmm the rooms and like how mm-hmm. much concrete there is everywhere <laughs> mm-hmm. so much concrete <laughs> oh yes concrete and brick we had brick all over the place um but uh yeah it was it was delightful to to get that um to see the university through his perspective um and to kind of have that help to set the foundation for you know the the college years <laughs> <laughs> that i'm i'm sure we're going to be getting into as we delve further into the series um so and as we mentioned earlier class such a major mm. theme for this episode um and unsurprisingly trinity is filled with obnoxiously privileged white kids Ooh. <laughs> I saw they peppered in a few, you know, um uh folks of color and you know like, hey, we're women here too. And that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and it was like You were okay, that token friend, you. but okay. <laughs> thank thank you. Um, I think <laughs> For those of you unfamiliar, Trinity is basically the Irish equivalent of Cambridge or Oxford. I think it was established by Elizabeth the First, so it's fucking old. It's just oh my god, yeah. There's and there's <laughs> been a long history of them uh, not allowing Irish Catholics to graduate and shit because colonialism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty much always been where the wealthy elite were educated, and for centuries yeah. that obviously consisted of Anglo sympathizers, Protestants. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you'll notice that most of Marianne's new friends have British sounding accents instead of Irish ones. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. just because as a gen very, very general rule, and not always true. That's an accent that the rich and upper class tend to want to have, you know. Yeah. I uh did the Google machine and um <laughs> uh Trinity College officially the College of the Holy and Undivided Trinity of Queen Elizabeth near Dublin is the st- <laughs> is the sto- sole constituent college of the University of Dublin, a research university in Dublin, Ireland. Queen Elizabeth I issued a royal charter for the college in 1592 as, quote, the mother of a university, end quote, that was modeled after collegiate universities of both Oxford and Cambridge. There you go. Because there's a Trinity in Cambridge. Yeah. But unlike Cambridge, I don't think they have many colleges. I think there's just the one. No. No, it's just the one. Um, So, yeah. There you go. Holy crap. Holy crap, it's posh. 1592. That is still younger than the secondary school I went to. Oh, my gosh. Everything is fucking old uh, in Europe, okay? <laughs> holy crap. Oxford, uh, 1096. Uh, and Cambridge, Cambridge is a bit like the new one on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's the wonderful thing about traveling to Europe is that, you know, you go over there and things are mind-blowingly old. Yes. But, that, I mean, that's probably one of the problems here as well for Connell because... Everyone around him is applying to this college because mm-hmm. of that history and the privilege. Yeah. And he's just yeah. there to read some books because he fancied a girl. Mm-hmm. And now he's encountering yes. all this classism. I mean, <laughs> the interaction with the girl with the pink hair who looked like he was shit girl, on her you... shoe. Just like, oh, yeah. you have to share a room? Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, it was like, girl, you don't know, but, you know, your loss. 
I think the show <laughs> does like a really good job about highlighting the class distinctions without mm-hmm. dropping an anvil on your head. Like I'm obviously yeah. like always thinking about it, but I think you could watch the show and just be like, "Oh, they're in love," you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sally Rooney just oh. in general needs praise for managing to sneak in class critique into a popular romance. <laughs> like yes. she's managed to Good job, comrade. Like, let's <laughs> let's talk about class. <laughs> oh God. Uh-huh. Um, how about the scene with Rob in Sligo? I love him. Like I felt <laughs> like this huge rush of affection for Rob because he's mm-hmm. like, oh, I didn't have your brains, did I? I was like, I just want to hug you. Like, I know that he was previously showing pictures of his naked girlfriend, um, but mm-hmm. now I'm like, I just want to protect you from the world. I think you're lovely. Um, yeah. He's I such he's... a stereotype of a townie, but yes, he's also really well-rounded and sympathetic, and you just want to mm-hmm. yeah. give him a hug and say, your life's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, y- you can... His insecurities are all out front and center all over his sleeve. And, and um, you know, I think that it it was it was nice to see Connell in a social setting that wasn't Trinity um, to see him, you know, visiting with an old friend without, you know, all of the old friends around just the the two of them. Um, enjoying one another's company and, uh, you know, giving Connell that opportunity to have a moment of familiarity um, with his buddy Rob. And I think Rob's advice, he Mm -hmm. needed that. He really needed someone to be like, okay, you may be uncomfortable, but this is an amazing Mm -hmm. opportunity for you to get out of this very sheltered small town. It's a gift. And I think Rob makes him, like, realize that. And that's why when he's asked to go join the drinking, he's like, yeah, okay, I will try. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, good on you, Rob. Um. Okay. So, while he's in town, he also sees Lorraine getting her groove back. Yeah! Go, Lorraine! Oh, she looked amazing. <laughs> she really did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was... I loved the her coy little answer with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lorraine, you keep your secret. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's like you know the 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 kid is out of the house now, and you know she's gonna be able to have some time to, you know, live her life, not be a mom. Yeah, <laughs> she's still so young. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the two of them are seem like more brother and sister anyway, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I I thought it was lovely uh, seeing her um, out and about. And I love, Go girl. I love the way she was, like, teasing Connell and, well, mm-hmm. like, encouraging him. She's mm-hmm. like, just go to a bloody party. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, usually if you're the first kid to go to uni in your family, there's uh, so much press, like, get good grades, don't waste this opportunity. And then Lorraine is there. She's more interested in, like, Hey, how's your mental and emotional well-being? Have you left the house today? <laughs> you know, she's a really good parent. Um, yeah, she is. She has his back. Mm-hmm. I love their phone conversation yeah. as well. Like, go to a college party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Might be good for you. Get out of your head. Go, 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 go. But you know, the as a as a card carrying uh, introvert. Um, you know, I I can understand his hesitation. Um, oh my god! When but... he was in the room and was like, immediately, no, I'm leaving. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like immediately, it's like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> and thankfully, Gareth was like, no, you're not going. Get back in here. Let me get you a beer. Um, so yeah, thank God, Gareth is such a social butterfly. <laughs> uh huh. It's interesting that she went for like the complete opposite of Connell. She went from mm-hmm. like the most introverted person she could find to known <laughs> joiner Gareth. <laughs> Life of the party, um, you know, all of that. It it's it's very interesting. I would love to I would love to understand 
how she met him. <laughs> how she, yeah, how she, well, yeah, A, how she met him, but also how she came to the decision that it's like, okay, I'm going to go with this guy to be her boyfriend. It definitely feels like a rebound choice to me, like a, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go for the complete opposite. We've all done that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I want to highlight Niall. I love Niall. Mm-hmm. I stand Niall. I feel like he is <laughs> the best person ever, um, and he's just like the perfect friend because he eases yeah. Connell into social situations, but like mm-hmm. in a not in a Gareth way, not in a <laughs> big yeah. boy way. He's just like, hey, come have a beer mm-hmm. in in the garden, yeah. <laughs> smoke some cigarettes with like Definitely. two people. Like it's it's more. It's like kiddie pool territory, not big party. <laughs> you know? Yes. So That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. He's just amazing. And I love the fact that like in the book it's mentioned he's from Belfast. And mm-hmm. this actor has like the most broad Belfast accent. <laughs> it's perfect casting. I just was like, Yes, oh. this is Niall. <laughs> he's oh. so obviously awesome. working class and he understands. Connell's discomfort. Mm -hmm. He's just like, yeah, Yeah. this place is weird. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Everyone wears chinos and uh, yeah. Uh Yes. (laughs) And, you know, Connell's running around with his, you know, like uh, hoodie and jeans uh, and his little backpack. I love that he went to Garrett's party with his backpack. I don't understand why Gareth was so like, let's talk about this backpack. I know, right? <laughs> don't mention it's the like, backpack. Gareth, you're supposed to be alone. socially competent. Come on. You're making everyone feel awkward. It's just a yes. backpack. Uh, that's yeah. a thing in the book as well, like where Connell's like, wait, why is he talking about my backpack? It doesn't look any different from anyone else's backpack. Uh huh. Seriously. It's like, what? Is, is there something on it that should be? Gareth I mean, never have a backpack. You know, he has probably got like a leather satchel mm-hmm. engraved with his yeah. initials. Yeah, you know, it would be too early for the man bags. But uh, but yeah, a, a leather satchel, absolutely. Definitely. Um, <laughs> with Oof. his expensive laptop inside. Okay. Yes. Name that book. This is a new feature where I tell you what books oh. I notice in the show because... <laughs> this is my very specific bag. Um, <laughs> while we're here, I'm going to mention the ones I noticed in the previous episode. So episode one, we obviously had Connell and Marianne discussing The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. Episode two, Marianne. Oh, I can't pronounce his name. I've never been able to pronounce his name. Kazuo Ishiguro. <laughs> there you go. Um, he She's reading Never Let Me Go, which is one of the most depressing novels you'll ever read. Uh, no. There were no books Yikes. in episode three because Connell was frankly too depressed to read. Yeah, and binge drinking. pretty much. Not a good combination mm-hmm. for, for yeah. reading. But in this episode, his class was reading, well, discussing and potentially not reading Mole Flanders <laughs> by Daniel Defoe. <laughs> They're all marvelling at the complex working feet working class female protagonist which indeed was a bit of a novelty at the time um there was a brief glimpse of connell reading candide or optimism by voltaire which i doubt is part of (laughs) any first year english literature course because that's literally fucking french connell um anyway (laughs) later connell talks about a passage from emma by jane austen i assume you're Mm -hmm. all familiar and if you are not why are you here um this may be the wrong podcast for you and then obviously in the final shot of the show connell's reading the adventures of tom sawyer by mark twain when he gets a text from marianne and Mm -hmm. why is this interesting because these are all so fucking different this is a wild ride like connell will read anything i love Mm -hmm. that for him i will not yeah but connell will (laughs) Well, I remember reading uh, Candide uh, in college. It was actually part of my uh, very first uh, history class uh, that I took in college, where we were focusing on um, the Age of Enlightenment. Oh, and, a classic uh, for the Age so, of Enlightenment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, of course, we were reading it in English, so, you know, I'm sure that 
there are some um, losses due to translation, but um, it was it was a great read. Um, but uh, I can't tell you. I I don't think I've ever read Maul Flanders. Me um, either. I'm like maybe thinking yeah. about reading it now because mm-hmm. even though I'm a hundred percent sure that none of the people that were talking about it have read it, it does sound <laughs> interesting. Uh huh. Yeah. Apparently, she's so, a prostitute. Oh. Exactly. Very interesting. We'll go with that. Um, oh, interesting. We've all read Emma by Jane Austen. Oh, and we've all read yes. the, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. So Yes. Hmm. We'll see what he's reading next week. Exactly. Fun, fun adventure. Okay. Look forward to seeing it. So, Marianne and Connell. Mm-hmm. They only had one scene, but I was just like, oh, A, this is amazing. And B... <laughs> I find the complete switch and power dynamics delicious. Yes. Satisfying. I do too. Mm-hmm. I do too. Um, you know, and seeing um seeing Marianne I'm gonna say quote in her um element, end quote. Um, because, you know, I think that in um many ways, you know, she is Putting on a show. Oh yes, performative it's, and happiness. Uh huh. I'm so yes. happy and satisfied, and I have friends. And look, look at my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. He's really yeah, popular. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, everything's great. And you know, I, I don't have any lingering issues or anything along those lines um, with you. You know, blah blah blah. Except you know, for a few like split second moments, like when Connell says that he felt abandoned. She's like, yeah, um, me fucking And too. she's like right back at him, like right back at him with that. And it's like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. That was a little tender spot right there. So everything is everything is great, except some of the Band-Aids are barely holding back the uh, the pain. So, yeah, uh, I, 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 there uh-huh. was like an element of like bravado and like forced jolliness. Yes. In the performance, yes. like she was like, "I'm great." <laughs> yes, that's mm-hmm. the, that exact tone of force. Yeah, this is great. This is mm-hmm. all I've ever wanted, and everything's perfect. And oh my god, my heart is breaking. <laughs> you know? Yes, everything is awesome. Just don't look too hard. <laughs> the, the meme of Ross from Friends saying, "I'm fine." <laughs> yes, in just higher and higher pitches. Yes, really, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh and the way that she's sort of using like jokes to sort of relax Mm -hmm. him and be like i think he sees through it but Mm -hmm. i think he the in the novel he's like really happy that she is doing Mm -hmm. this whole performance for him because it means he doesn't have to have that awkward conversation where he apologizes he's like he he, he says oh he always imagined that when he saw her again he would immediately apologize but because she's pretending that everything's mm-hmm. fine and she's got over it and it wasn't that big of a deal he's able to just avoid the awkward conversation which exactly. is classic connell isn't it it's like i don't yeah, okay. conf- i don't have to confront uh, these emotions avoidance that should be his middle name <laughs> oh man that would make his initials core I don't know why I'm thinking about that. <laughs> oh, but, you know, Marianne is also um, avoiding, uh, yeah. Very lack of avoiding things. No, uh, not very. And you know, we we talked about you know her choice of Gareth. Um, you know how how long will Gareth remain in the picture? She uh, will so find out when next he woke week. Up. <laughs> She was like, oh, you're ruining my coffee. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, oh, dear. Okay. So the the guild on the lily is pretty much gone. <laughs> um, it can't. I find but, it like fascinating that this is like maybe November at the latest. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Sh- she's already calling him her boyfriend. Like, yeah. how long have you known each other? Like, three weeks? <laughs> yeah. I know that 18 is like, this is classic behavior, but, like, this isn't a very <laughs> serious relationship. Um, yeah. Mm. I did find it interesting, though, that in the the kitchen scene, like, it starts off mm-hmm. very, like, I'm 
fine. And then by the end of the conversation, I felt like they were back to how they were before. Like all the walls mm-hmm. had come down and they were just being honest with each other. Um, yeah. It got very yeah. real towards the end. And I get very emotional whenever Connell's like, I'm not their type. And she's like, no, you're everyone's type. You're perfect. Like there's Mary yeah. still completely is like has a huge level of unconditional love for him. Like, he treated her like shit, and she still Mm -hmm. loves him (laughs) so much. She looks at him like he's just, well, she knows he reads Jane Austen, so understandable. She's like, you're amazing, (laughs) everyone loves you. Yes, Um, exactly. But Connell's just got extreme low self-esteem and doesn't really, I think, yet appreciate how deep the love is there. Yeah. Ugh. Can't wait for the rest of this show. <laughs> oh, can we talk about Peggy and Joanne? Like we do. Love oh jo- yeah, love Joanne. Yeah, yeah. Joanne's awesome. Peggy, Peggy, what a piece of work. Peggy is hot mess. She's yeah. like Pe- Joanne's like the angel on her shoulder, and then <laughs> Peggy is like the coke snorting devil. <laughs> Yes, but what I I think what's interesting about Peggy is I think you could write a whole book about just Peggy and her relationship with her mother and how that's become this own self destructive yes. mess. How and it's manifested her, itself. Yeah, a lot of her bullshit isn't, and the act of rebellion I think is about that. Mm-hmm. But the fact that oh, yeah. Marianne is drawn to someone like that is interesting, mm-hmm. and they have such a complicated relationship and. I love that because depictions of female friendships are usually very one note of like, rah, rah, yes, we're besties. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or, there's there's a, a lovely complexity here. Yeah, because it's, it's usually seeing. either love or it's hate. And there's mm-hmm. a bit both. There's a competitive aspect to their oh. dynamic that I think yeah. is really true. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. got that one frenemy where you're like, I like you, but I <laughs> would also fight you at any moment. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but meanwhile, Joanne is Joanne reminds me of Lorraine. Oh yeah. She's yeah. She's just that this calm, normal, um, normal person. Uh, pardon the pun. Huh. Um, and uh, you know, I think that that she is someone that uh, Marianne uh, turns to just for uh, a bit of sanity. Um, between the be- between the two of them, because I'm sure Peggy just gets to a point where it's just like, okay, you are out of control. <laughs> I mean, she, and you know, it's like what a Tuesday night she's snorting coke and fucking yeah. some random guy who mm-hmm. is probably twice her age. Just yeah, hey, yeah, have I... fun, <laughs> but also, Carla's <laughs> gonna yeah. end in a mess. Also new to the picture, you got Gareth and Jamie. What did you think about oh. their Oh my god, what to say? Gareth Gareth, you know, all right, he's okay. Um, you know, um it appears that he cares for Marianne um in a genuine way. Um I know he's problematic, but he's yeah. he's like one of yeah. the least objectionable men she dates, I think. Mm-hmm. He, oh yeah. He seems to care for her and has yeah. relatively normal expectations of a relationship and yeah. has a, a level of respect for her that is not always on display with her other boyfriends. Mm-hmm. Being yes. Of. Hi Jamie. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> God. He's revolting. Everything he says is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I found him to be uh, revolting when I was reading the book or listening to the book. Uh, you and the know, actor I was just really like, embodies that. Yeah, the actor really picked up the ball on that one and and ran and uh, didn't do it in a, an overly dramatic way. Um, you know, and you know, didn't like over overact the no the character twirling yeah yeah no mustache twirling just you know the the type of person that you just go oh really he reminds <laughs> me so much of jack farthing like i can't <laughs> i feel like jack farthing could have played this character 
<laughs> to Enid. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, not not liking Jamie at all. The red flags are. Just... Oh, they're legion. <laughs> What's that the kind of the hill? It's an army of red flags the place. knocking you down, Marianne. Mm. Um, but yes. I totally understand why she would be into playing the kind of weird dynamic in games they're playing where he... When she says, like, mm-hmm. I don't want to make a decision, I was like, oh, been there. You know what you need? Yeah. Prescription medication. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a difference a little well butrin makes. <laughs> it does. <laughs> You don't need a man <gasps> making decisions no. about what you're drinking. That is fucked up. But Mm-mm. anyway. Ugh. So, mm. favorite performance? Um, I would have to go with um, the scene in the kitchen. Performance. Well, that's my favorite scene. Yeah. That's my favorite scene. Scene in the kitchen. Um, the favorite performance? Um, Connell. Um, dude is consistently just amazing in this he's amazing in everything literally if you have time watch after sun um <laughs> oscar nominated for a fucking reason um man just just fan such it, it's his performance is so nuanced um it it is just a delight to watch um you know he doesn't overact he is natural um and kind of uh transparent in who Connell is um and that's something considering how closed off Connell is so i mean it's he's he's just extraordinary it is amazing though that he is usually so guarded and then he comes around mm-hmm. Marianne and suddenly like he emotes the shit yeah. Out of every scene when he's with yeah. around her, he's suddenly like an open book in the mm-hmm. scene in the kitchen. Like it, he definitely got the memo of, "Hey, this is the only person you're comfortable around." Um, yeah, I um picked Daisy Edgar Jones because oh well, yeah, because well. as much as I personally relate to everything Connell is going through, and I think he's magnificent, <laughs> I think it's much easier for most people to connect to him than uh-huh. Marianne. She's mm. her experience of being rich, beautiful, and loved by everyone, it's not very fucking relatable, is it? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> how am I emotionally connecting to this girl? Because she is everything that I am not. It's oh. very fucking incredible that she's managed to inject <laughs> this this figure with pathos and sympathy and she feels like a real person and not just like Mm -hmm. i feel like i've seen so many attempts at making the rich girl sympathetic the sad Mm -hmm. rich girl who just smokes sadly and you know in gorgeous (laughs) lingerie and you're just like it it looks beautiful but i don't connect to it emotionally but i always feel like with marianne there's like a fragile layer of vulnerability um Mm -hmm. and it's an incredible performance and there's so much nuance yeah. there yeah and yeah. bitch you're doing a good yeah. job <sighs> two thumbs up yeah she is yeah i i really wish that that she had been nominated for uh awards during the the award season um i haven't caught i haven't kept up has um did normal people uh wind up winning anything I mean, I, we talked you know? about all the awards Paul Meskel ran. Uh, it won a few. It ran the BAFTAs. It won, like, Best Drama at the BAFTAs and then the, and the Irish equivalent of the BAFTAs. And then I think it won a few mm-hmm. Emmys. So, yeah, it did win. It won a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. It did good. It, 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 it did good. Yeah, you know. Um, but nothing yeah, for Daisy good. Edgar Jones. Because, yeah. That's our journey. Um, yeah. <laughs> Favorite scene, uh, kitchen scene. There's yes. no need to go over scene. it. It's the best scene. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Uh, costumes, hair, and makeup. Let's talk about Marianne. <laughs> Marianne. I love the description of uh, her fronting the Fleetwood Mac tribute band. Isn't it perfect? Because I'm, I'm a it's genius. Absolutely perfect. 
she you know it's absolutely I, perfect she's gone for this sort of ultra feminine vintage look that i feel is 100 mm-hmm. percent stevie nicks you know yes the long mm-hmm. skirt the puffy blouses <laughs> elaborate smoky eye makeup that looks effortless <laughs> but you know took like 17 hours to achieve <laughs> yes i don't think it's an authentic presentation of herself Mm-hmm. It feels curated oh, it's, it's, and calculated yeah. to look yep. relaxed. Yeah, but it's not. It's all part of. It's all part of that that shell that she is in. It's it's all a part of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you compare that to how she was dressing in Sligo, like worlds apart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's exactly. It's like an armor she's putting on to fit in with mm-hmm. this crowd that she. You know, she got her cool vintage looking flat, so she had to get the cool vintage looking clothes. Mm-hmm. The only scene yeah. where I thought she looked like who she actually was was in the scene. There was a scene in her flat with Joanna where they're just drinking tea and she's wearing like, she's got her hair in a messy bun and she's got on like a slouchy jumper. And I was thinking like, that's a sign that you can be yourself around that girl. And around everyone else, you're pretending to be Stevie Nicks. Like, all she needs is a really big hat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just got the song, you know, like a white wind dove. Sings the song, sounds like she's singing. Ooh, ooh baby. Ooh, ooh baby. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, we should have that's... played like Edge of 17 or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um i agree with you wholeheartedly um she puts on a lot of like different looks throughout the i mean don't get me wrong beautiful outfits obsessed with them i was mm-hmm. googling one of her rings i was like how do i get that ring but <laughs> <laughs> oh i know the ring you're talking about yes is it the silver the long silver one yeah did you google it too <laughs> No, no, but I saw it and I was like, oh, yes. want, 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 want. And we're going to be um, looking at up later. I also feel like I would wear it and then uh, find it really impractical and not be able to wear it to work because, <laughs> you know, I do a lot of writing. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's kind of stabby. So, you know, <laughs> it's costume jewelry. Stevie Nicks would agree. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, in- yes, indeed. Yeah, it's very interesting uh, that we've got... Yeah, like I was saying, uh, Marianne has a lot of performative outfits throughout the show, and we will be discussing them. This is Marianne's fashion corner from now on. <laughs> Carl not just wears tracksuits uh-huh. and short shorts. That's his... He doesn't have to pretend. Yeah. Ooh, I found it. Ooh. Is this <laughs> Sammy the link? Okay. <laughs> Locations um, and photography. One thing I really noticed is that all the scenes in Bub- in Dublin of Connor walking around and going to uni and stuff um, were really cool toned. Stark white lighting, lots of blues. He goes back to Carrick Lee and everything is like very blue, blue as shit. Uh-huh. And then when they're in the kitchen talking, <clears throat> it's very yellow. Mm hmm. Uh, so that's an, obviously an intentional choice. Like, literally, take the time to look at these scenes. Like, I've never seen so much, like, blue and yellow pumped up into the colouring mm-hmm. of this show before. Um, yeah, just yeah. an obvious sign of <laughs> depression <laughs> versus happiness. Yes. With colour. Yes, exactly. Ugh. Um, I am just so impressed with how... The um, director of photography is utilizing um, natural light uh, in 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 many cases. Um, you know, it, and with the natural light providing the the shadows that uh, are so um, evocative. Um, I just they are knocking it out of the park. Um, with the photography and the locations. I mean, I I get geeky about booking your trip to Dublin. <laughs> yeah, I get geeky about um, university campuses. Um, you know, there uh, when I uh, was visiting uh, Sparks in Cambridge, 
Um, there was one. Oh, I'm so glad you visited the. Oh yeah, I there was one day where you know I just put on my walking shoes and just went strolling around the university, and it was so beautiful. I did the same thing when um, uh, my ex husband and I went to Oxford to uh on on our Harry Potter tour and um uh, you know wandering around the the streets of Oxford and the all of the colleges and it was Did just you go to the library? Yeah oh yes. Buckley. Oh yes. Oh absolutely. God. Um <laughs> my favorite thing is to go to the to the libraries unsurprisingly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Same here. I mean uh here at, at the University of Washington uh when I was in high school uh had to do um, all kinds of papers for uh, English and history. And uh, we would, most of us would go to the libraries at the UW uh, because it wasn't that far from uh, where I went to high school uh, to do our research. And, you know, I, I spent so many hours in um, uh, the libraries there uh, that it uh, just felt almost like a second home. Um, so yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're among friends. We're all nerdy here. Yay. You don't have to be nerdy to be here, but it helps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, you could, they can just keep giving me, um, locations at Trinity and I'll be happy. <laughs> I love that they use like real locations. Mm -hmm. This sounds like right, really obvious. Of course you have a, lo you and like, it's set at Trinity. They filmed in a Trinity. <laughs> What's the big deal? Do you know how many shows <laughs> don't actually do go to the place where they the place? Yeah, no. <laughs> they never have the budget. But anyway, yeah, I love that Trinity were like, yeah, come on in. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it's be if you it's ever beautiful. watch a show that is supposed to be set in Seattle, uh, no, you're seeing Vancouver, BC, it's Toronto, or yeah, like, in, yeah, Vancouver. in Vancouver, yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, anyhow, it's that shot of the sky needle thing. Oh, the space needle, That's yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what anything's called in America, okay? <laughs> That's quite all right. <laughs> um, I also want to point out this very fun fact that you get a shot of Connell and Niles fridge. Yes. So obviously I paused to see what was inside of it. 90% beer. Oh. Just beer, 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 beer. But then one block of Irish butter. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. I was like, this is... The set dresser understands uh -huh. the assignment. Yes. Down to the details. Awesome. <laughs> um, Anything you didn't like? Apart from Jamie, obviously. Ugh. Uh, Thank you, Jamie. Uh... It went so fast. Yeah. It went so I fast. I don't know, though. I always feel like the episodes are short, obviously, but they're so detailed. Yeah. And I'm, like, gripped the whole time. Mm -hmm. I feel like... They cram a lot of stuff into each episode, never, and it I doesn't feel, feel like, rushed. oh, I didn't get enough. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't feel rushed. Um, You know, I think... I feel satisfied. Yeah. I think after last week's, um, I was wanting more, just you know, to help me recover <laughs> from episode three. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I could always, I can always uh, wish it was a little longer, but. Uh, You're going to be thankful that the, that they're only 30 minutes later on, because like, obviously it gets so intense that you're just like, oh my God, I need the break emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Um, you know, having now having finished the book, um, totally get that. Yeah. 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 We're going to need the breaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of the breaks. Um, how many communist manifestos out of five? Uh, five. Ooh, mm -hmm. going in hot. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I loved, I loved this episode. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, you'd pointed out uh earlier was you know the the fact the structure of the episode um you know I, I enjoyed that immensely um and um you know i just i i thought it was beautiful i thought it was a beautiful episode and it made me want more like right now oh, perfect yeah. television then yeah 
Because usually I watch things and I'm like, oh, I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched you for an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> now I'm done. <laughs> um, I went with 4.5. Oh, okay. Uh, because I think... I thought last week's episode was slightly superior mm. um, by that metric. Mm. Like, it's still a five. Yeah. But <laughs> I have to give a little, you know, a little variety, mm -hmm. a little up and down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yes. And obviously, it's like 0. 0.5 yeah. not off, <laughs> for not having a crying scene at the end. <laughs> you can, minus 0. 0.5. Yes. For, only making me cry twice <laughs> instead of like for a full 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so we get into inbox. Mm -hmm. Hi girls, Morgana here. I hope this week is better than the last few. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite a bit questionable, but yeah, you're like, you know, life still be life in. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you guys deserve some light days. So, about this week's episode. I still remember, to this day, the anxious feeling that the first half of this episode gave me. The first time I watched it. I hadn't read a summary of the series, so I was thinking that Marianne was a thing of the past, and that now the series would only be about Connell. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, it was a return to my college years. That almost universal experience, and again, I found myself identifying with Connell. My twin sister studied Portuguese and German at college, and during the five years of the course, what she complained most about was the people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the people who decided to take a course that was 50% literature and who showed up for classes without having read the books on the schedule. So this, is, this is universal. Yes. People just come in and they talk absolute shite mm -hmm. for like, and they get away with it, which really annoys me. Yes. They just Googled what topics the Academy liked to work on with each book and were ready to destroy something they hadn't even read. Uh, <sighs> death. Sorry, I'm, I'm, going, I'm having PTSD. <laughs> um, I, on the other hand, studied history, a predominantly male course full of Gareth and Jamie's eager to discuss any subject just for the pleasure of proving themselves to be intellectual males above the ordinary masses. Able to rationalise a man's right to be a Nazi, but unable to understand or listen to their female colleagues. Oh God! Ding ding ding! I'm, I'm starting to get I'm starting to get a little sweaty. So <laughs> yeah. did we all go to the same? University? Oh God! I I think so. Maybe. Oh. Realizes your pri and realize your privilege. Then what is that scene with Gareth and the unnamed girl about? pink head girl um about connell sharing a room that's brutal the tone of pity in their reaction really irritated me rich people with no perception of reality as if someone chose to share a room with a total stranger if they could afford something private as if there was some there was something unworthy and undignified i think the series writer did this to make it clear that marianne was dating a complete asshole so that we wouldn't find it so strange that connell pointed this out to her five seconds into their conversation <laughs> <laughs> i like when he calls them a holocaust denier yes yes <laughs> it's a bit of an exaggeration but, <laughs> but it's it, perfect it, it was great yes take it easy boy <laughs> don't let it be so obvious that you want her back <laughs> This episode has such good lines, but for us girls who are fans of Jane Austen and period dramas, seeing him identify with Mr. Knightley, and which according to Connell is his moment of balance and care. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Just had a moment there. <laughs> uh, but for, which for me is Knightley trying very hard to rationalise why he doesn't like the Frank Chit doesn't like Frank Churchill as Emma Suter's beyond obvious jealousy. <laughs> Some bells ringing for Connell there. Uh, but there are other very good lines like, when am I going to be the sensible girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Love that line. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are telepathic. It's classic me. Came to college and got pretty. <laughs> I love how Marianne seemed prepared to tear her ex apart at any moment with answers and questions while Connell blushes and can't hide any feelings. <laughs> yes. I love how it takes her three sentences to ask about Rachel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, true. so where's Rachel? <laughs> you still together? <laughs> I hate the fact that he was public with her to the point of being on 
Facebook. Facebook relationships in 2011 were a big deal in Brazil. <laughs> you needed to tag the person they had to accept and Facebook hunted all your photos together and made a wall collage. <laughs> oh my God, uh, did they? Facebook? Uh, it's not that deep. Um, then they would send notifications to both of their friends list so everyone would know that they were engaged. <laughs> I really hope that's not what she's referring to because just imagine, it makes my head explode. <laughs> what do you girls think? Oh, God. I, do I don't recall it being that deep. But then I was never really a Facebook girly. Yeah. I just remembered that, you know, in a relationship, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. um, I was always in it's complicated, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But I was 21 then, so that was a complicated time. Oh, God. <sighs> Feeling old once again. I love Joanna. <laughs> She's such a wise and perceptive young woman. Mm -hmm. The modesty of knowing that what you want in life and being well rounded at 19 and not thinking that those who don't know are losers is a quality that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least you're self aware. Yeah. Some honourable mentions for the nerds out there, aka me. I love Marianne's talk about historical discourse analysis. It was the topic of my thesis in college. Nice. When Connell is preparing his food at the beginning of the episode, there are two boys talking in Portuguese about the course schedule. Brazilian Portuguese, I think. It's a n n note to the fact... Nod to the fact... Yes, that's a nod. I think it's a nod to the fact that we invaded Ireland. There are 7,000 of us in as of wow. 2023. Wow. Of oh, 70,000, not seven. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, but have you seen how many millions of Brazilians there yeah. are? Yeah. Fucking loads. Yeah. You know, in the book, okay, not to be like. <laughs> well, in the book, we had to say it at least his... once in this episode, you know, to 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 maintain our our um, title. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, um, I remember reading the book for the first time, and it's mentioned that Niall and Connell share the flat with two Portuguese students. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, boy, represent. Yeah. And then I watched the show and they were Brazilian. And I was like, okay, of course. Yes, of course that's happening. <laughs> where are you going to find, where are you going to find some Portuguese people? Um, I, they could have, you could have got me over there. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, I thought the opening scene with him arriving at college was cute. Yes. In 2021, I took a tour there just because of the series. The city and college are beautiful, and they have a Harry Potter library for the Potterheads. <laughs> That's all, girls. Thanks for everything, and let's see you next week, queens, with love, Morgana. Oh, thanks, Morgana. Thanks, Morgana. Mm -hmm. That was funny, Mel. Oh. Now I have to go to fucking Dublin, don't I? I'll yep. start checking for flights. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me know what you find. Uh <laughs> Let's see. Okay, our episode five summary. Uh, Connell joins Marianne's social circle, but doesn't fit in. He apologizes for how he treated her. She reconsiders her relationship with her new boyfriend, Gareth. And if you're reading along uh, with the episode, um, then this episode covers page 82 to 94, which uh, we believe is chapter nine of the audiobook. Yes, confusingly, there's no chapters in the, in the book. It's just like three months later, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, that's not helpful. It's a that's that's not a chapter title, hon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all for us this week. We'll be back next week discussing episode five, Ooh. which is such a good episode. You're gonna love it, Michelle. Oh yay! If you want to get involved. In the discussion on the podcast, you can email us at inthebooksnetwork at gmail.com. We are on Instagram, so please follow if you want fun bonus content and updates on the podcast. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please rate, review, tell your friends, do all the things. Thank you, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.